Hi everyone, this is Avonis Anastasiou and in this video I'm going to share with you the lessons that I have learned from my trip to Paris and of course uh, my visit to the Eiffel Tower, okay? Um, as soon as we landed in, uh, in France, we realized um, that France is the most visited country in the world. In 2018, more than 90 million international tourists have visited the country. <laughs> and everywhere we, uh, we went, there was a waiting line. Even if we want to go to a restaurant, there was a waiting line. We wanted to see a cathedral, there was a waiting line. You want to go and you know, get up on the Eiffel Tower, there was a waiting line. You wanted to go to a kiosk to buy an ice cream, there was a waiting line. And, and, and why is that? Because it's the number one, uh, as we said, uh, country in the world with the most uh, a number of, of tourists. And the reason behind that is, of course, all those attractions, all those places that you have, you can visit when in Paris, and especially the Eiffel uh, Tower. Uh, the Eiffel Tower was built between 1887 and 1889. It took only uh, two years and a couple of months, and it was constructed as the main attraction of the uh, Paris International Fair that was going to take place in 1889. The tower uh, get the name um, from the uh, developer, the, uh, the designing, uh, the engineer, the uh, major uh, engineer, Gustave uh, Eiffel, uh, who designed and uh, his company designed and uh, built it. Okay, so as we, when we went to the Eiffel Tower, it was late in the afternoon, and we heard that the tower is going to be illuminated with thousands of little lights, and it's going to be a spectacular um, uh, scene to see. So underneath, underneath the Eiffel Tower, there is a park, okay, and a lot of people. They were lying there, they're having picnic. So we said, okay, let's lie down and wait for the lights of the Eiffel Tower um, to turn on. Okay, and as I was lying there, I said, okay, let's, let's, let me search on my smartphone about the history of the Eiffel Tower. And what I found out is that when they, well, when they were building the tower, the critics um, uh, of the time, uh, some artists and, the, and some, you know, specialists, they say that the structure was something uh, awful. It was something uh, monstrous. It was an abomination. It was something they didn't even want to look at it. They even say that, you know, it was going to turn tourists, you know, uh, back with the negative uh, comments, okay? So it gets all that negative criticism when it was uh, constructed. And I was so surprised because if you really go, I mean, just by looking at it, it's an amazing structure. But if you're close to it, it's, it's even more uh, spectacular, okay? So that's where I get my first business lesson, which is ignore the critics, okay? So no matter what the critics are saying about your business, your product or your services, you know, just go on and just do it. As the Nike slogan says, just go and, and, and do it. Um, especially for the people who wanted to start their own business. You know, if you listen to what your friends are saying, some critics, your parents, then you're never going to start your own business. So no matter what the critics are saying, uh, Ignore them, don't listen to them, and just go and do it. And because if it's something great, it's going to stand through, uh, through time. Now, don't get me wrong, because I, 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 I'm a strong believer of the, of the positive, of the constructive criticism. But there is a difference between positive, constructive criticism and negative criticism. The positive critics are usually all those who are going to tell you what they don't like, what they didn't like about your product or business, but at the same time, they're going to tell you ways to improve it, okay? That's a way to distinguish from the negative critics where they usually say what they didn't like, 
but they're not going to give you any proposals of how to make it better. Okay, so that's a, 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 a difference between positive critics, the people who really want to help you, and the negative critics who are maybe jealous and they want to stop you from accomplishing, you know, your goals, your dreams, and, and, and you know, and market your product or, or services. So ignore the critics. Now, my, my second uh, lesson is that uh, brand like the Eiffel Tower, okay? They built the Eiffel Tower because they wanted to brand the fair, okay? They want to make something different, something unique, so it will attract people from all over the world to see them, to see, you know, the tower and at the same time visit the exhibition. So as business people, we should always think about, you know, branding. So when we think about branding, don't think about branding and getting a lock on your products. Brand everything. Brand your services, brand your products, brand even your offices. <laughs> okay. Imagine getting people to want to visit your offices and take pictures with them and then share it uh, on their social media accounts. Just like Google and Apple and Facebook. People want to visit Google offices or when they visit, they take a lot of pictures and they share it on their social media. And they, are, they are so proud they've been to Facebook offices or Google offices or Apple uh, stores. Okay, They even share you know, the offices, not the products or the services, the offices. Okay, So always remember to brand like Eiffel Tower. Brand your product, your services, your offices. Because if you create a good brand, you know, something unique, something different, because branding is all about the art of differentiation, then people will want to share their experience on social media, and that's going to get you free publicity. Actually, this is what they have done in uh, the, the Belgians. The Belgians have done in Brussels. In 1958, because of the success of the Eiffel Tower, the Belgians uh, built the Atomium, okay? <laughs> it's a replica of an, uh, of a, of an atomic uh, particle, how they say it, where they wanted to get people to visit the exhibition uh, in 1958 at the, the International Brussels Exhibition. So this branding of international fairs is is, is being repeated again and again. Okay, so brand like the Eiffel Tower. Now, the third lesson that I learned through my research is that you have to rebrand your, yourself and your business every seven years. The Eiffel Tower, the Iron Lady, as it's, call, as, as it's called, it's not made out of steel. It's made out of iron. And the iron gets uh, oxidized and it gets erosion. So every seven years, they have to repaint it again, okay? Before at the beginning, it has a, a shade of yellow and now uh, the, it has the, that brownish uh, color, okay? So every seven years, do something different, rebrand, make slightly changes, improvements on your product, on the design of your product, on your logo, on your services so you stay current and you stay relevant to the new needs of your uh, of your new potential uh, customers. Actually, Adidas has done it, Nike has done it, and even Coca-Cola has done it. So if you go and look out at the logos of those businesses, they have done a rebranding and they try to position themselves as current and relevant to the new, uh, to the new prospective uh, customers, okay? And my last lesson is by bonus tip is that from, uh, that I get from the street of Paris, okay? So when we left the Eiffel Tower, I realized that even with the help of the GPS, it was so difficult for me to find our way back to the hotel. And the reason behind that is because there are so many little roads, big roads, boulevards, highways, and they are all tangled together, okay? And I was, uh, and I said, okay, I have to find out why there are so many streets and little streets. And if, and if the GPS tell me, you know, you have to turn right, I look right, and there's like 
three <laughs> right <laughs> streets, <laughs> three right turns, okay? So again, I went to my smartphone, to Google, and I searched to find why there is such a, a, a difficult road network. And I found out that the reason behind all those little streets is that uh, Paris was not bombed by the Germans in the Second uh, World War, okay? So because the Germans, you know, they occupied France so quickly, they didn't even have to bomb it, okay? Just like they did in London or in any other uh, cities. So that's why a lot of small roads are still there. All the roads before the war are still uh, there. And that, and that messy road network is what I find when I consulted business. Of course, I don't, I'm not talking about, I'm talking here metaphorically, is that when a company is small, everybody's following, they're doing their job their own way. And that's okay. If you're the only person doing the job in your own way, that's okay. But as the company grows, you cannot, you know, doing the same thing and, you know, everybody is doing it on a different way. You cannot do that. It's going to become, it's going to create a big mess. So you, every company, what I, I, I recommend is that every company should have a manual, an operational manual that all the processes are written down and everyone should follow those processes, even if they don't feel like doing it. Okay. Because if you have pro processes, then you have one process, just like one road, okay? And everyone should go and follow that process, that road. And this create, you know, um, uh, this create like um, a tranquility in the business because everybody knows that they have to follow the same process. It doesn't create mess, it doesn't create misunderstandings, it doesn't create, you know, uh, dissatisfaction for uh, customers because uh, if, Everyone is doing, providing a service their own way. If a customer, you know, uh, you know, reach, let's say person A, and he gets that type, one, one type of service, you know, one type of process, and then he contacts person type, uh, person uh, name B, and, and, and he show him a different process, then the customer is going to be confused and it's going to get uh, uh, frustrated. So everyone, every company should have an operational manual and every should, everyone in, in that company, in every company should follow the process that are documented in those manuals, even if they don't feel like doing them, okay? Now, if a, a, an employee finds that the process is, is not working, is too bureaucratic, then they can um, submit a proposal to the management and only the management is going to decide to change the process. And when the process is changed, then it's changed for everyone, not only for that specific employee who make the suggestions. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned because more videos are coming up.